Okay, y'all, I'm an idiot, and I did not realize that my phone was dying, and then it died. This is what happens when I don't do setup. I did my own setup, and my phone died. But the conversation was going so good, so I'm really embarrassed, but it's fine. Um, but I messaged Natalie, so hopefully she'll be coming back soon. Um, Anastasia was technical difficulties. It was a, uh, it was the difficulties of... I'm a dumb bitch and I forgot to charge my phone. But now I have my, I had now I have my phone charged or charging. I know, I'm sorry, Carity. Okay, now he's back. All right, we're back. Sorry, uh, <laughs> I'm an idiot and I forgot to charge my phone. I'm a dumb bitch. But it's okay. <laughs> but we're back. I'm charged. Okay. So, but as we okay. So to recap. So <laughs> I love the filter. So we both realized that we are both former, uh, not well, professional cheerleaders. You were NFL cheerleader. I was an NBA cheerleader. Um, and also, we were talking about how you had to come to the crossroads of you were either going to go on the Bachelor. Or Big Brother. So, okay. Um, I guess when I, was, so when I got cast for Big Brother, I mean, I wasn't in the same necessarily scenario, of you, scenario as you because had The Bachelor ever reached out to me? No. But it does kind of make you think of like, okay, this is the, this is the path that you have to take because once you go with either CBS or ABC, you can't really switch. Like once you go on yeah. one, they're not gonna take you for the other. No. So how did you come to your realization that you were gonna go on CBS versus ABC? Um, I don't, uh, the money. There's a half million dollar prize. So I was like, okay, I'll do that. I was like, I'm not trying to win a man, I'm trying to win the money. So I could buy a house, you know, and like be an adult and pay off my student loans. <laughs> yeah. So that's why I viewed it. How old are you again? I'm 30. I turned 30 in March, so I'm newly 30. She's 30. I turned yes. 30. Natalie, we are the same person. I'm 30. I'm crying. <laughs> I'm 30. These these filters are hilarious. <laughs> no, this is mine. But like this is a <laughs> period. Wait, okay, I'm gonna keep freckles on. All right, cool. Oh, wait, that's so good. I like this one. This is like, this is like a good contour. But, um, so what would you say? So, you went on Big Brother season six. Shit. What season was it? Was it 16 or 18, guys? What season was I on? I don't know. I Big Brother 18, right? 18. 18. Yeah, 18. Yes. Um, so what would you say was maybe the biggest takeaway that you've learned, like since coming off of Big Brother? Because it's a very stressful, emotional oh, yeah. situation. Do you think you've yeah. become a better person since then? Or what was your biggest takeaway of what you've learned? I mean, I feel like I've always had a really good heart. Like I quit my non, I work full time nonprofit for kids. Mm -hmm. So I was working every day, every week, going to hospitals, homeless shelters, so it didn't wow. really make me a better person. I think it made me a stronger person. <laughs> you were already a good person. <laughs> I was already the, a fucking great person. But it made me a stronger person. I dealt with a lot of difficulties and just really nasty people. And it really taught me not to trust everyone. Because not everyone, people pretend like they have their good, your good intentions, especially in the public eye. But behind closed doors, people could be really bad. You know, you've experienced it. No, people yeah. can really have bad intentions. So I grew a backbone from Big Brother. Definitely. Mm -hmm. I agree with that. Mm -hmm. So what do you think of the whole me? So I was interviewing Jillian from season 19 last night, and we were talking about how only on Big Brother is it where you are talking to somebody and they say the most offensive remark, but then they back down and they're like, oh, but, it, but it's not personal, it's gameplay. I yeah. mean, there are, and they, like only in Big Brother can they say the most offensive remarks but then back mm -hmm. it up by like don't get like don't get offended. It's not personal. It's gameplay. Like how do you how do you figure you are able to separate the personal jobs from the gameplay jobs? Because they are there are some things that people say that they attribute to gameplay and it's not. 
Because everyone just plays on emotion. And that's what I've realized, especially doing the challenge too. People play on emotion. And that's another thing is like, I, like I play on emotion. That's why I believe I haven't won yet. Because mm -hmm. I let my sensitivity and emotions get the best of me, right? But yeah. I try to like differentiating gameplay where it's like pers well, personal or strategic. It's like a fine line. But people are just going to use the emotional just to throw anyone under the bus yeah. and everyone else just as long as soon as you taint someone's name it doesn't matter what you say if I say cat is a bit I go into a room and say cat's a snake and a bitch and I have nothing to back it up that is not yeah. even gameplay because you have let's say you've never done anything your yeah. name's tainted and people are going to start because then they're wondering they're like wait what did she do like yeah I haven't seen her do anything but what if she did yeah yeah that's my <laughs> Dang. So mm -hmm. do you say that the, I guess, the mental manipulation part of it versus, because you've been on both the challenge and Big Brother, was yeah. it more on Big Brother? Or do you think that there's more of a manipulation mind game with the challenge? Big Brother, million percent. Okay. Maybe Big Brother is way more manipulation, way more that. The challengers are not mental strat strategists. A Wes is. There's few players that I are- I feel like Wes is killing on Big Brother. So Wes, I've played with a lot of players. Wes is one of the only few players that would actually succeed on Big Brother. That he's probably the only one, to be honest with you. I think he, so it's funny because I actually look at, watching the child, and I'm a bandwagon fan, but I feel like, I, I, well, I think that he would definitely succeed, but I also feel like Johnny Bananas would be, do really well. So Johnny Bananas not. would do really well, but his mouth would get him in trouble because he yeah. can't keep his mouth shut. So Johnny has the strategic brain set for it, but his mouth would get him mm. way too much in trouble. Interesting. Yeah. Hmm. So going into Big Brother and the challenge, what do you think was your biggest, I guess, your biggest um, asset? Your social game or your physical game? Social game. You're kind so of, I feel like you're talking I'm about a hybrid of different things. I'm not a full package, but I'm a hybrid. Like, so people, like, I'm playing, especially the challenge, you're playing against six foot plus guys, right? That and you're huge. tiny. You're, and I'm 4'11", so I have right? to beat these guys, right, somehow. And sometimes I do in challenges. I place really high in, I play the best individual, mm -hmm. especially when, it, like, I have really good endurance. Like, I can beat most people in endurance and a lot of the guys. Like, mm -hmm. that's, if it's endurance, I know that I have Because you're that. used to dancing. Mm -hmm. You're used to dancing for an entire halftime or an entire quarter. For, yeah, for the for the Jets, we cheered in the heat in preseason, especially on turf, which is gets hotter for four yeah. hours straight. We lose three pounds a game. Something yeah. ridiculous. A pound to three pounds a game. It was like oh, yeah. that much. So there's things that I, I think feel like my social game is the best, but people always catch on to my social game. That is my best, and then I get caught. And then, but my endurance also is fucking mm -hmm. off the charts. Puzzles are not my favorite thing. Um, there's other things that are not my favorite things, but I do my best. <laughs> do you think that being, because you're four foot 11, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so being four foot 11, do you think that the taller contestants had an advantage against Oh my you? God. Okay, reaching up to a cupboard, cupboard, how do you say that in English? Cupboard? Cupboard? I don't know. Cupboard? cupboard. cupboard. Reaching up to a cupboard, yeah. right? Is it going to be easier for a taller person? And who, what's going to take? It's going to take less energy for a taller person to reach up to a cupboard, cupboard or whatever you fucking call it, and I, get a get a what's glass. That, uh, cabinet. A cabinet. Cabinet. <laughs> so you go to the cabinet. It's going to take less energy, and it's going to be a lot easier for a taller person to go get something from a cabinet than a smaller person. I'm going to have yeah. to exert more energy. I'm going to have to jump up on the counter. I'm going to have to reach up there. I'm going to have to jump down. I'm already going to be winded. Whereas a yeah. taller person just reaches and goes. So yes, it does. It, I mean, it sucks. Like, yeah. and grabbing things, a lot of the challenge, especially the challenge stuff, grabbing things, doing puzzles, like it's a lot easier if you're bigger because you have to carry heavy things. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be a lot easier for a bigger person, but I can't make excuses for myself and I've done really well. It's just going to take a lot more work. Yeah. Which almost makes you even more physically fit than the people that are taller yet win the same kind of challenges. Yeah, I have to train three times a day to go on a challenge. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. So another thing that I feel like being a professional cheerleader and dealing with, I mean, I, I'm sure the New York Jets are the same. 
So um, being a Dallas Mavericks dancer, it, you're kind of like, you are in the limelight. Um, mm -hmm. For me, it was in Dallas, for you to be in New York. Um, mm -hmm. So I guess you kind of have like a little bit of a taste of the limelight, as, as cheesy as that sounds. But yeah. then coming back to that, um, it's a little bit more of maybe an easy transition into you're kind of used to dealing with fans and you're used to dealing with the press and all of that. Yeah. Um, how do you think that being a NFL cheerleader prepped you for the attention that you got from Big Brother and the challenge and all of that? Um, I mean, it prepped me because with the hard work that goes behind it, like, you know how it is for training camps and like it's training. It's insane. Like, yeah. It's insane. discipline. Those NFL cheerleaders work harder than like any. Like, People don't realize. You'd be surprised. Like, we, so when I was a Dutch cheerleader, and this will tie into what I'm saying, because it's all about, about discipline. I didn't grow up with money. I grew up in a one bedroom apartment with my mom and my sister mm -hmm. my whole life. So I, everything I have, I got it for myself. Yeah. So I knew, holy shit, I have to have grit. I have to work hard. So I auditioned to be a Dutch cheerleader when I was in college. I made it. Um, no one ha handed wow. it to me. No one, you know, like, and Your I was first like, time not, auditioning, you made it? My first time I That's made amazing. it. That's mm -hmm. amazing. So I got, I got that and I learned you have to work hard, right? So I was working two to three jobs and going to college full time while cheering. While for the cheering. <sighs> So there's nights where I used to, you had to be at MetLife Stadium at 6, 7 a.m. To, to practice. I would be dancing bar, two bar mitzvahs on Saturday and get home at, at three, 2, 3 a.m. That means I didn't have, I probably had some of the games that I danced in, two to three to four hours of sleep before cheering a four-hour game. So this discipline taught me, like, okay, if I want to be successful, I have to really, really be disciplined, right? Yeah. So after, when I got on Big Brother and all these other shows, all the press, everything, it was just, I was already disciplined to do what everything I already did. I was already trained for the press, but I also worked at Madison Square Garden. Mm -hmm. So I already had the corporate background as well. Nice. Dang. And mm. not, and I'll, and I'll go ahead and say a lot of girls, especially, I don't mean to, I, I honestly don't mean this to, to throw shade to anyone in Dallas, but a lot of girls in Dallas, because it is their end all be all to be a Dallas Cowboys cheerleader or to be a professional cheerleader. They don't, or they don't learn that grit of the corporate world. So it is yeah. honestly kind of hard to find a professional mm -hmm. cheerleader that also knows the grit of the corporate world. I didn't want to go down this path, but here I am because I'm really passionate about it. <laughs> Me what, too. Well, what do you think about the fact that you were a professional cheerleader? And I know that you're spending over 40 hours a week practicing mm -hmm. and getting ready for the games. You're getting paid for less than a part-time job. Oh my God, you're what do you, more what, money. Do you, what do you think about the pay with NFL cheerleaders? So I think it's severely underpaid. So of course it is. So I still have a really good connection with the Jets and I signed up for that job, right? Mm -hmm. So it was a situation where I knew what was happening. I signed up for it and I knew what the pay was going to be. Mm -hmm. So I, it was more for me passion and that's why I did it for three yeah. years. I couldn't afford to do it anymore, right? Mm -hmm. You're spending more money than you're actually making. You are. So it really does suck that I believe it really does suck for, for, for women that we put so much work into and we're not getting paid that much. But at the same time, we signed up for it. And there's going to be millions of other women that are going to do it, that would do it for free. I know. Free. But, that, but don't you think that that's what the, that's what the catch is, is that, I feel like, yes, there are millions of other women that would do it for free, but mm -hmm. if I feel like when there are quality women like yourself that would be willing to do it, that, that do what, yes, you would do it for free, but you have a passion about it and you want to put your best foot forward, I feel like NFL cheerleading should put forth a new leaf. And I don't want to get on the soapbox, but well, they made a lot of changes, it, but they could, I feel like they could pay their NFL cheerleaders a salary of, say, 40000 a year, and it is, yeah. a you know, a lower-paying salary, but they could afford to do it. I don't know. Thoughts? Concerns? I agree with that. I agree with that for sure. Um, I do agree with that. Like, I, I get it. But mm -hmm. most of us do it because it's, like, dance is my passion. Like, I yeah. got to perform with Lenny Kravitz. Like, I performed for and with Lenny Kravitz. Like, mm -hmm. when That's I was awesome. to see that, you know? So I got to do some cool stuff. Would it be better for, like, they can afford it, the NFL. Like, I remember when I was on the team, one of the players, I forgot what, what team it was on, traded his jersey with another player and bought it for, like, $26,000. Yeah, it really and I was like, I mean, that's a good thing about sports, or I guess the exciting thing about sports is that it's for the love of the game. Yeah. But, if, I wish that it was different, but there were a lot of, um, there was a lot of, uh, what is it called, um, lawsuits. So there was a lot of lawsuits against a lot of teams. They do pay more now, 
But yeah, they is do. it a salary? I, I don't think so. Yeah, I mean, I don't think they'll ever pay the salary. Like, they'll never pay a little. It's so weird, too, because the girls put in so much work into it their whole lives. When I was a professional cheerleader, I, it was almost, I, I wasn't able to hold a nine to five job. And even my director said that once, once I got a nine to five job, I was the director of marketing for a amazing organization here in Dallas. And when I got that, she, I remember she pulled me aside and she was like, I'm concerned about your ability to be able to commit to practice because now that you have this full time oh my job, God. you're just making practice by five. When really we're getting paid at practice from seven to 9 p.m. And I was like, well, hold on, if I'm working till five, and why do I have to be there before seven? So I don't know. It's crazy. But so our director, know. our director is a mom, a wife, a businesswoman. Really? She encouraged us. Like you That's were awesome. highlighted if you were, if you had like, she, she praised you if you had a job. That's and if awesome. you were doing well. So Dang. we were praised. That's something we did not get in Dallas. <laughs> we got praised for, and it's New York. How are you going to make rent? In New York, cost of living is impossible. There's it no is. way. There's no way you could live in New York with just one job. Too, a lot of people have full time jobs and weekend jobs. Like, there's mm -hmm. no way the cost of living in New York is so different. But our director has something that I mean, I had the best experience. I, I love, love the Jazz organization. I honestly, through uh, Jasmine, Danielle, and all my friends that have cheered for the New York Jets, I've only heard good things. Yeah, it was the best. I was always Sunshine Girl. So I, I mean, I loved it. I made two calendars. I got to travel with I them. They, they paid for my trip to Jamaica, to whatever, where out Cayman Islands. So we had the best experience possible. And like, they encourage you to have a good job. They encourage women awesome. to be independent women. You know, they encourage you to be whatever you want to be. If you want yeah. to be a housewife, they encourage it. If you want to be a businesswoman, they encourage it. So awesome. they let women be whatever they want it to be. Yeah. So I, feel like I had the best. That's a lot of what like the Dallas Cover cheerleaders encourage with their dancers, but the Mavs dancers didn't exactly encourage that so much. Mark. Wait, really? <laughs> but it's like, no, no, they didn't. I feel like well, the Mavs is NBA, NBA, right? The Mavs are NBA. There's yeah. more, there's more games that all the girls oh, play gosh. dance there, every game. We had over, ooh, I can't even remember it off the top of my head. I mean, I feel like we did have over 50 home games. It was insane. Yeah. But um, but it was some of the best years of my life. Yeah. And um, and I think the organization itself is amazing. But there are some things that um, are a little – the lines get blurred, and they kind of demand so much more than other people. So I was wondering if, like – I don't know. I was kind of wondering, like, what your thoughts were as someone who – now that you've been in Christiana! the public eye. Do ah! I? Oh, Do you know Christiana? Christiana? Oh, yay. Hi. So um, Christiana was not to interrupt you and be rude, but oh, she was yeah, fine. She's one of like my really, really dear friends. She was on uh, America's Next Top Model. Ooh. I love you, Christiana. That's so cool. But Wait, she's was like she an on, amazing person. Was she a dancer with you or was she like No, I know her from New York, like like oh, we cool. met in New York doing I think I don't remember where we met, but we just became really cool and she's amazing. Oh cool. So you love you. live in New York, right? What? You currently live in New York? New York yeah, New York, yeah. So how have things been with the coronavirus? Uh, I mean, I don't leave the apartment much. I didn't leave the apartment for 30 days. I just went out for a run the first day, the other day. And then I went oh, to the it? grocery store after over 30 days because I was freaking out. But it's, I mean, I'm doing my part because my friend's mom is a nurse and she says the amount of bodies she puts in bags is out of control. So I don't Wait. want to mess with the system. I actually, okay, so I want to hear more about that because – here in Dallas, or honestly, not even in Dallas, there are some people that they, you've, I'm sure you've heard the argument of people say that, oh, like, people talk about all the coronavirus patients, but do you know any? And then people are like, no, I don't. Personally, I know three people that have been diagnosed with coronavirus, but I mm -hmm. think that there is that argument that a lot of people are like, oh, since I don't know anybody, it's not that serious. So being someone who you But we could all, you could be carriers. You don't know. Like, exactly. I think yeah. I'm a carrier because my sister had it two months ago with, before really? it became a trend. We think she did. She didn't get tested yet, but she ha was sick for a month. She lost taste and smell. And I actually had to sleep with her one night because we're in the process of moving. Uh -huh. And she was breathing in my face one night and I didn't get it. So I could be a carrier, but, but we don't, we don't know if she really has it or not. But I feel. I actually feel like I might have been a carrier, or I'm. I'm not a carrier. I feel like I actually might have had it too back in December. But then I was staying with Nick at the time, and he didn't get sick. And I went to see his family, and none of his family got sick. Mm -hmm. 
So, um, but, but your friend's mom is a nurse. So she's seen a huge influx of patients. Dude, they're, they're, they have, they're putting uh, bodies in freezers and bat, like they're just putting, and like, so what happens is because they're so overpopulated, like mm -hmm. the nurses have so many people that they're watching over that have coronavirus that are, that are sick, that are dying. Like if someone's dying, they kind of sometimes just have to let them go because they're so, they are so overpopulated in those hospitals that they're just letting people, they're not letting them die. They just can't take care of all those people. I know. It's, it's impossible. It's a, was that, where, where do they, where do they dock the ships? Um, they had brought some ships in, the, for, with the U.S. Navy had brought ships in to help, I think it was off the coast of New York, mm -hmm. to help, was it off the coast of New York to help them? I don't know. Yeah, they brought ships over and stuff. I don't know exactly um, what's happening with that. Uh, but they, so I had an Amber Alert about a week to two weeks ago, an Amber Alert requesting for nurses to volunteer. No like, way. Like retired nurses, nurses, anyone in the medical field, everyone, an Amber Alert requesting help. Mm -hmm. That's horrible. Yeah. So how in the city of New York has it, besides that, obviously, how has it changed your day-to-day -day life? Because New York is one of the busiest cities with the highest foot traffic. Um, yeah. How has your life changed since going in quarantine for coronavirus? Well, it's, I mean, my sister lost her job. I lost all my contracts. So we're both jobless. And people think that we've been on Big Brother and the challenge. If you don't win, you don't make money. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, I'm you still have to hustle. Yeah, we're I all, have student loans, oh just gosh, like everyone really, else. Natalie, actually, side note, have you ever Googled your net worth? I, it says, like, yes. I'm like, y'all are crazy out there. <laughs> I'm a millionaire. I'm like, oh, you, know, you think so? Like, who's paying me this? <laughs> no. <laughs> but anyway, it's changed dramatically. Like, I have to stay indoors and, like, you know, I can't see my mom because if I'm, I do, I could be a carrier and like, we don't know how long carriers carry it and how, like, you don't know. I don't know. We don't, nothing is set in stone with this virus. So it's like, you can't see your family, but I've taken this opportunity to like actually start recording videos and YouTubing and having fun with my sister and like finishing my apartment. I mean, we don't have a couch. This is my kitchen in my living room. We don't have a couch yet. So we didn't get to finish um, the apartment. I love your little, whatever. <laughs> I have this was my couch purchase. I love that. <laughs> Wait, have you made a TikTok? No, no, I was going to say, no, don't. Natalie is TikTok. What? <laughs> no, Natalie thrives on TikTok. You do, you thrive on TikTok. I love TikTok. I need to like learn Look all at, the dances now. So like, I you make your own dances. dances. Don't I you? do my own dances. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I love TikTok. Look her up. She, you're so cute on TikTok. <laughs> Thank uh, you. Thank you. So if you had to choose between Instagram and TikTok, which would you choose? Um, uh, right now, I'm, I'm a millennial, so I'm still stuck on Instagram. But, Same. Uh, but I'm going to learn TikTok good enough to be on. I just was on a TikTok seminar, how to actually do it today. Wait. So. With her award style. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> Okay, we are fucking twins. How are we not friends? How are we not friends? Oh my gosh, Natalie, I felt so, I felt so professional in my Zoom meeting. I had my glasses on, and my glasses on. I did not. I'm a little bit afraid right now. I'm a little. I took notes. That's so funny. No, I was so in. Biggest takeaways though from that seminar today. I feel like I knew kind of everything else, but. To change, yeah. to change to like TikTok Pro. Mm -hmm. okay, We're ready. Be dumb. I didn't realize yeah. that I should be on Pro this whole time. Yeah, I didn't know there was a Pro. I was like, what is this? I had to actually, because she talked too fast. I had to Google it so I can actually do it myself. Oh my gosh, now we are meant to be friends. Now I know. We are both Big Brother contestants. We are both former professional cheerleaders. We both mm -hmm. did the TikTok seminar on reward style. <laughs> Mm hmm I it's like I knew looking at your Instagram I was like you know what I was like this girl I was like is she not I was looking for your NFL I thought you're a Dallas cat I scrolled all the way down looking for like the blue outfit the I Dallas actually, outfit. I was so, like where is her Dallas photo because that's what I wanted to post oh, to so I, today. actually so so when I went through side note so when I went through Dallas Cowboy cheerleading auditions 
That was, <laughs> and I say to this day, that was the most empowering experience I've ever been through in my life. Um, I owe a lot to that organization for honestly accepting me for who I am. And uh -huh. that was the first time that I really put myself out there and was rewarded for it. And get, kind of gave me the confidence of like, hey, like you, like you are a good dancer. You can do this. Even though mm -hmm. I'm sure they should know I was a bad dancer, but whatever. But you know, just <laughs> taking a tiny camp my first time out, you know, it was very empowering. Mm -hmm. So I have yeah. good things to say about that organization. For lack of a better word, I don't well, have anything to say about the Mavericks organization. So I, I, I love that you I don't speak out the truth. Do I? I love that you speak out the truth. And Thank Christiana, you. No, I love you. no and, and I get it. Like, I mean, I don't want to be like, I don't want to be petty, but like, but I will say that like, I do, but I do think that there's a problem with like the way that they treat professional cheerleaders, the way that they treat, especially the Mavs dancers, they don't pay them enough for what they, for them, what for the do. work that they're putting in. There are Mavs dancers in the world. Well, no, they kind of, they brought them back as like a little like, sub team. What? Um, Which so, one? So I don't post a lot of dancer photos. And also, I feel like I'm sense. a lot more attractive now than I was in my dancer photos. Wait, me? <laughs> I got hotter now. Like, so I'm actually. And then my, there's my mom. She's saying 10,000%. So I'm not, you know, I'm not crazy on this. <laughs> Yo, that's amazing. But, so um, I have I weight know. issues. So I'm actually like, there's moments in my life where I was a lot heavier. Mm -hmm. And I'm actually, that's my next YouTube video. Well, one of the next ones where I talk about how I lost this weight. Oh, like, oh all the weight. I need to, so I, need I don't to post a lot of I photos need because, yeah, <laughs> I feel you, girl. <laughs> Even though everyone's beautiful at any size, but for me, I didn't, I wasn't healthy. I was sick too. So it just wasn't healthy for me. And it was just like bad memories, you know? Yeah. I, I, yeah. I think there's something to be said about like, even when you're, you know, being in the professional cheerleading world, like there are, I don't know, like whether you look like you're healthy weight or you're not, you don't know if you're achieving that in a healthy way. Um, yeah. I don't know. There's just so many things in the professional cheerleading world. I'm so glad that I went through it because it was a bucket list mm -hmm. thing of mine. But uh, but it's not necessarily something that I want to give them free publicity advertising my Instagram. So, so. You, would you ever audition for, for the Dallas Cowboys ever again? Um, girl, I'm 30. <laughs> you um, can make it, girl. You know there's like 45-year-old women as I know there are. No, and there's actually, I have a lot of friends that have made the Dallas Cowboys cheerleading squad at the age of 30. Thank you, Juan, um, 95. I I think that when it, it was like growing up in the city of Dallas and Dallas, I can like it's actually my bucket list to write a book about this someday. Um, I feel like the Dallas dance world, and for lack of a better word, might kind of brainwashes the girls in dance studios. And for in this again, this is lack of a better world word because I also think it's important that these girls are looking up to these. Um, you know, these girls are healthy and they're beautiful and they're great role mm -hmm. models. But at the same time, like they are viewing these girls as the, as the epitome of success. And there's so many bigger things that they could be looking at out, like outside of being a professional cheerleader, like be a lawyer, be a doctor, yes. be a uh, head of Wait, marketing. Wait, so is that much in, ingrained in all yeah. the girls' minds? But there's a lot of girls in Dallas that they don't look past that big picture. And then once they reach the goal of being a professional or whatever, then they don't know where to go. Um, so wow. And it, 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 especially in Dallas, That's so it's, I, I'm sure you've seen this with your with your fellow cheerleaders because it's not just in Dallas. It's I'm so sure different because I'm New York. New Do York I'm, is way different. Like really, so like we're not like like it's not engraved in our heads. Like you have to be a judge cheerleader. You have to. So you have to also think about it. We have the Knicks, which isn't the best team the, ever. The you know, Knicks, are you kidding me? The, the Knicks are the best. <laughs> Besides the Lakers, the Knicks are the best NBA dance team out there. No, no, no. I'm talking about the game. The, the, oh, the, sorry, no, the, the players. players are bad, no, no, no. But the dancers, the dancers the are, are the, such a solid team of dancers. So those dancers are technically trained. Those dancers are better dancers than most dancers you'll ever meet. Yes, of course. Mm -hmm. I meant like the... the <laughs> The, the men, the players, oh, yes, they're the players. not the best team. <laughs> the people that are actually getting paid millions of dollars. Yeah, the people that are getting paid millions. <laughs> the dancers are actually, so I remember when I was working there, um, the owner, Jim Dolan, was like, changed the dance, the dancing from like NBA style, which is more hip hop and like sexy and like mm -hmm. a lot of pumping and all that. And he changed it to more Broadway style. So they're like doing pirouettes and, and fuetes. You have to be extremely, <laughs> extremely yeah. talented to make the mix. Oh my God, Meg Valley! I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. Hey, Meg. 
<laughs> Meg's the best. And me and Meg live like 40 minutes from each other, but we're separated by quarantine. Yeah. Wait, but, um, wait, where, so you're in Dallas right now. I am, yeah. So that's your hometown. I thought you were in LA. I'm no, like, like, making, I love you know, to in LA, but uh, I'm born and raised in Dallas. So I can't imagine living, I can't imagine leaving. It's crazy how different it is um, here and there. Wait, my friend Christiana also asked, is things, are things move, uh, starting to open up again in Dallas? We are under house uh, quarantine until May 15th. Okay. Well, so. when things open up again, I'm going to let everyone else take that little fresh breath air. Everyone else can do whatever they want. I'm going to stay in a couple more weeks. <laughs> I, I'm kind of feeling the same way. I think I might say, like, let everyone else kind of take their fresh take their fresh air. And then depending on what happens, <laughs> and then, see what happens. <laughs> then maybe, like, two weeks later, I'll go travel. Yeah, I'm going to see what happens, and then I'll make my decision. <laughs> but what's the first thing you want to do as soon as the quarantine's lifted? The first thing I'm going to do is go to Chipotle. What about you? <laughs> Wait, hold on. You, but you need to get Chipotle delivered. I don't, I don't want anyone breathing. I can't. I only cook for myself. I'm not eating any food from anyone touching. I'm a germaphobe. So this, the virus really killed my life. I am not eating any food other than me and my sister cooking. Um, That's smart. So I just, knowing someone's breath was on it, I just don't know. Like your hands, I don't know. I just, no, no thanks. <sighs> I wish I was that smart. I go to Chick Fil A a lot. Yeah. I, Wait, Chick Fil A is incredible. I know, but but I see that I see the way they handle my food, and I feel like they've taken the extra measures. I feel like if you're gonna eat anywhere fast food, it should be Chick Fil A because like it's they're always food. like they're like, ma'am, would you need anything else? I'm like, where am I? They would die for me. Yeah, <laughs> they're amazing. They're really nice. I know that they don't support like they don't support the gays. Um, so it makes me feel guilty eating there sometimes. They sometimes actually, I, actually. Is there an update? There is an update. I don't exactly know what the update is, but, um, back in, <laughs> so back in December, I posted, okay, actually, by the way, so back in December, I posted a picture of me wearing a Chick-fil-A shirt and I didn't mean it, it, it wasn't an ad, it wasn't anything. I was just like, I, I love Chick-fil-A. Yeah. So I'm going like, to post a shirt and I was so surprised. So, but anyway, but um, I was wearing the shirt. It wasn't sponsored. It wasn't anything. Uh, but so many people came at me and they're like, "How dare you support this sponsor of like whatever Chick Fil A like for a buck?" And I was like, "Honestly, like they didn't even pay me to post this. Like I just love Chick Fil A, but whatever." Um, I ended up having to make a statement because I was I realized that I was offending so many people that follow me. Yeah. The last thing I want to do the, at the like I wanted to eat chicken. Like at the end of the day, that's all I wanted to do. I was it just tastes good. One. And I want my Instagram to be a place of happiness and exclusivity and all that. Um, I realized that, like, literally the next week after I had issued my, like, apology statement, people were DMing me and they're like, hey, by the way, Chick-fil-A just, like, retracted their, I guess, I guess it was what they used to, um, they, like, they retracted a couple of statements and they started um, maybe donating to a couple, like, programs Pro that they did support LGBT. LGBTQ communities. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's, the times are changing. All I'm trying to say. Oh, that's so good to know. That's so yeah. good. Th things that you might not see advertised because in the actual community, you know, the news and the community. Yeah. But, um, but from an insider perspective, they actually are making moves and are trying to be more um, in inclusive, I guess you, you could say. But yeah, so no worries. That's you so good to know. Chicken. I was planning on stealing their sausage and like, <laughs> And then eating other chicken with their sauce, because that's the orange sauce is my favorite. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. So here's Baby Yoda. I am. She said they stopped donating to those organizations. So yeah, pretty much. Um, there's a lot, yeah, a lot, all the organizations that they were donating to that were under uh, under question, they stopped donating to, so. Got it. Okay, good to so know. So we are free right, to eat our chicken. Chick Let's go. Yes, we, are <laughs> we, can eat, everyone, we can eat our Chick-fil-A, yes. <laughs> I, I still eat there anyways, which is unfortunate, but. Also, your teeth are so white. Do you whiten them? It's a filter. It's a filter and a ring light. What does um, that mean, a filter? No, I brush my teeth. I'm so obsessive compulsive about my teeth. I brush them like three times a day or four times a day, if that. You need a, tu like, you need a tutorial. What do you brush your teeth with? Like, please post that video later on. I'll watch it. I don't even know. I, it's, I just post, I just brush my teeth a lot. <laughs> but I, I have used Crest Whitening strips in the past. 
Hmm. Yeah, I'm really sensitive to you. So, okay, so yeah. we didn't even talk about the challenge. And we're I all, know the we're challenge. Honestly, we're over an hour. Natalie, we're meant to be friends, honestly. Yeah, wait, we are over the hour. I know. What the heck? Okay, but wait, <laughs> so really quick, what are your predictions? And, I, and I'm assuming you're not spoiled. If you are, then don't answer this. But if you're not, what are your predictions of what's going to happen on the challenge this upcoming season? Um, no, I'm not spoiled. I, I don't like I've gotten no intel that I want to know from anyone. Obviously, I have a couple friends on the show, but I didn't want to hear their stuff. Oh, who are your friends on the show right now? Like I love Swaggy, obviously Jay, okay. like Jay, my two friends. <laughs> Jay, um, <laughs> Jay's been killing it. So yeah, I met Jay in 2016 or 2000. No, 2017, excuse me. And like, it was like me, Krista, him, and Adam from Survivor. Like, we just became really good friends. That's in my last YouTube video. Um, Wait, were you so, on Survivor? No, but I'm like, I became friends oh. with a lot of them because we did Hearts of Reality. Have you oh, ever Hearts nice. of Reality? I have not yet because I was in big, the Big Brother house while the last Hearts of Reality was going on. Oh, but yeah. I'll be there next time. Free, so you and I can Free hit. jury. Free jury gets to go if you get out earlier, early enough. Yeah. Um, so... Yeah, my predictions are, this is not spoiled. I have no, no intel that I, I didn't want intel from anyone. Even if I got a phone call from someone getting eliminated, I like, th there is no, I didn't want to know anything, you know? So, I, except I do know who wins. That's the only thing I do know. Okay, don't tell us. But that <laughs> I, I do know. know because, I do know that because it was like, so, there's, it was spread already all over. So it's like, you go on oh. Twitter and you already see it, you know? But I never okay, started. Well, you have to it. I'm so not I I'm think, the right website because I have no idea who won. Well, how about I say I'm who I'm rooting? I'm rooting for a few people. I'm definitely, so I really, so I didn't watch your season of Big Brother or Bailey season or Swaggy season, any Casey season. None of, no one seasoned. I actually really like Casey. Um, mm -hmm. Her and her girlfriend, me, her and her girlfriend came and visited me and my ex-girlfriend in our old apartment in Boston. I know so I really like them. Yeah. So there's a, a few players I really love that are, that are, that I hope do well. I'm rooting for Jay. Um, I'm rooting for Anissa because I've never played with a game with Anissa, but uh -huh. she's never won a season. So I really want but her to win. She's a legend.